Would you like to find out the easiest and simplest way to install your own 4K CCTV system in your home? Most people think that because of complicated wiring this will be a really tough job but actually I'm going to show you some really easy techniques so that you can do this yourself by the end of the video. We're going to go through the full install and set up together so make sure you keep watching because you're not going to want to miss it. So before we start installing any cameras, I think what we'll do, we'll take a look at the kit and take a look at what comes in each box. And then once we've seen what's in each box, we'll set it up in the office to check that it all works before we install any cameras. Because the last thing you want to do is get all the cameras installed and then realise something's not working properly. So this is a 4K 8 megapixel system by Reolink and I've gone for the four cameras that you can see here. They are the RLC 811As, but you can go for other cameras. They do a massive variety, so there'll be a link in the description anyway, and you can go and check them out. I went for this kit because it's power of Refinet, so that means you only have one cable going to each camera. That makes it A, easier to install, and B, there's less messy wires everywhere. So let's take a look what's in the boxes. You've got the Ethernet cables included in your kit. They are 18 meter Ethernet cables. You get four of those. Obviously, if you have more cameras, you get more. This is the NVR, so that's the heart of the operation. In each of the boxes here, we have the cameras themselves. So you can see I have all of the cameras plugged in, and the screen and NVR are plugged in, and we're ready to give it a dry run. So let's turn the power on, and hopefully we see something on the screen. Be prepared. There we go. So far this is really easy and really self-explanatory. For some reason I expected it to be quite tricky because uh, let's, let's face it, technology is never quite so simple. But so far this is really, really easy. And there we go, we can see on the screen we have all four cameras working and operational. Now I'm not going to delve into this too much at the moment because I want to get the cameras installed before we take a proper look at the system. But we've given it a test, well we know it works, now we can start installing it into the home. I'll be installing the cameras onto the soffits. That is the easiest way to run the Ethernet wire into the loft to gain access to it. There are other ways you can do it. You can use the notch on the plate here and run the wire through that and mount the bracket onto the brickwork if you'd rather do it that way. The cameras are fully adjustable and I'll show you how to adjust them once we've got them mounted onto the soffits. I've got the GoPro on my head so you'll see a point of view aspect of me installing the camera. You have a template with the camera, you can see I used it on the first one already. All you need to do is mount that template where you want it to go and make a mark in the centre. And then make the three marks for the screw holes that will mount the camera to the soffit. You can now use an Arga bit to make your centre hole for the cable to go through. You can use a spade bit to drill this hole if you don't have any Arga bits. Now make the three mounting holes for the screws so that you can mount the camera in place. Now unravel your Ethernet cable so that it can be pulled up through the soffit. Tie a small loop in the Ethernet cable and push that up into the soffit. Push it as far as you can to make it easier for yourself the other side once you're in the loft space. Just tie a big loop in the end of the Ethernet cable so that you can't pull it all the way through into the loft. Now we head up into the loft space where we can pull that cable all the way through. Now you just need to retrieve the Ethernet that you pushed up through the soffit. You can do this with a hook on the end of something or you can use electrical rods to pull the cable through. I'll be using a Ferret Pro. They're really cool little bits of kit and if you want to check one out I'll put a link in the description below. And now you can pull the cable all the way up 
through the soffit. You can see how handy the little ferret pro is for a job like this. He's done his job, we can turn him off now. And now pull the rest of the Ethernet cable through into the loft space until you reach the knot that we tied in the other end. We can undo the knot that we tied in the other end of this Ethernet cable, push that up into the soffit space for now, and just leave that Ethernet connector hanging out the end, just like that. Now we will mount the camera onto the soffit. Be careful that you don't drop the camera and scratch it all on the wall, because if you do that, you're just gonna make a mess of it. Plug the Ethernet cable into the PoE connector, push all of the cables up into the soffit. You can now use the screws provided to mount the bracket onto the soffit. That's all three screws tightened up and now the camera angle can be adjusted by using the supplied Allen key at the back of the camera bracket there. You can then turn the camera and adjust its angle until you're happy with the position. We'll roughly position it for now and then we'll come back and do some fine adjustments once we've got the screen on so that we can see the picture that we've got on the camera. You can then lock off the angle. Repeat that process for all of the cameras that you'll be installing on your home. So if you're following along so far, you should now have a reel of Ethernet in your loft space for each of the cameras that you've installed. But this is the tricky bit. How are we going to get those cables to our NVR? Now my NVR is going to be placed in my office because I don't want it in too much of an apparent place. I want it to be hidden away a little bit. So there's a little space in my office on the desk where I can place that and then use my office monitor with the NVR. Now I'm lucky, my office does have Ethernet in there already, so I don't have to run an Ethernet wire from my router up to my office. But I'll show you three different ways that you can route your wiring dependent on your situation. So method number one, and probably my favorite, but only if you have the access. And you can see it's been done with the sky cable there. You can actually hide the cable behind the downpipe. So what you could do is drill another hole in the soffit and bring the three wires down the back of the drain pipe and in through the wall to bring them to your NVR and wherever the Ethernet comes into the house. And of course the NVR will also need to be fed by an Ethernet cable from your router. And you can do that in exactly the same way. Now because my house is linked attached like you can see here and my office is that room up there, that's where my NVR is going to be. I don't think that running the cables behind a downpipe is going to be my best option. What I could do is put in a false downpipe down this side of the wall for reasons I'm not going to explain at the moment because that would be a spoiler to something very big that's coming to the channel. I'm not going to do that option either. I'm going to have to route my cables indoors. Now there's two methods it's to route in the CCTV camera cables indoors and I'll explain both of those to you right now. So this is my office and my NVR will be going on my desk here so that I can run it through my monitor. So I've got two ways of doing this and you can get creative with running your CCTV cables. So what I could do is bring them from the loft and run them inside the stack pipe all the way down the wall here and then bring them across to my desk. And you could use wall cavities and things like that and get quite creative. But it's not the easiest way and you would need cable rods and things like that. So I'm gonna keep it simple. And again, there is a reason why I'm gonna keep it simple that I can't say at the moment. So the third way and the easiest way that I'm gonna do this is to run trunking. So I'll be drilling a hole just in that top corner over there and running my Ethernet cables down in the trunk in to my desk. That is gonna be the easiest way for me to do this. But like I say, get creative and find the best way for you. Ultimately, all you need to do is to get the Ethernet cables from the loft to the NVR and to get an Ethernet cable from your router to the NVR. And you can pretty much do that by whatever means necessary. Just use whatever method works for you. So you can see if you've got coving 
and you make a nice square hole in the coving, you'll be able to cork around that hole and that will make a nice neat finish. Now what we need to do is take the cap off the trunking and we can then feed the Ethernet cables down through the hole from inside the lock. Take hold of a cable rod just like this one and we'll feed that up into the hole that we've just made. You can now see the cable rod, so take hold of that and pull that up and through so that we can attach our first cable. And now pull the cable through the hole. So you can see our first cable is through the hole. Now repeat that process for the rest of the Ethernet cables that are coming from each of your cameras. Now place all the cables into the trunking and we'll be able to put the cap back on. So you can see we now have all of our wiring in place where we want to place our NVR. So all we need to do now, grab hold of the NVR unit. And if we look at the ports on the back, you'll see that we have all of the ports for the Ethernet cables. So we'll plug all of the Ethernet cables in for the relevant cameras first of all. And then if we take a look here, we have the Ethernet that comes from the router. So we'll plug that one in. The HDMI lead is already plugged in. And then the USB mouse so that we can control the cameras on the screen. And lastly, the power to the NVR. We can then switch it on and hopefully everything works. So you can see we have an image. So that is installation successful. You can see I have a camera missing there. That's because I didn't install the fourth camera because that is gonna be coming later. There's so many different settings that we can adjust on here. If for example, we go into the camera on the front of the house, we can turn a spotlight on, we can sound alarms. We can of course adjust all the image settings. We can do things like adjusting the sensitivity. We can create detection zones. So on the front camera, I don't want detection on the road. So we can actually select what areas we don't want detection on. So there's a lot we can do with the system, but to be honest, this is something I won't use very often. I'll be using the app most of the time because it's really, really user friendly and I find it a lot easier to use on the go. So this probably won't get used very often apart from the initial setup and maintenance. So now, thanks to technology, you'll see a little pop-up on the screen and I'll show you the app. So first of all, we'll download it. And then once you've got the app, it's really easy because it detects your system for you. All you've got to do is pop in your password and then you'll see this screen where you can see all of the cameras that are on your system. You can see the amount of options we have on the screen here so we can control everything on the go. So hopefully you can see CCTV cameras don't have to be difficult to install and I've made this really easy for you so you can go and give the job a go yourself. There's a lot of ways you can do it, a lot of ways you can run the cables and you can make it really simple for yourself. There'll be a link in the description below to the exact kit that I've used today and there'll also be some Amazon links to some real link products that I think you might like as well. If you've enjoyed the video, make sure you give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel because you don't want to miss future content and I'll see you guys in the next one.